Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for coming back to Breaking the Ice podcast. Um, whether you're on YouTube or you're listening on to audio, please rate, subscribe to us, comment, whatever helps us. Keep uh, sharing with friends and family. And I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Garage Doors Plus, Invoke Media, and uh, Basil's. Basil's Pizza and Subs in Holliston, Massachusetts, in Holliston Meadows Pet Resort. Um, we have today the hilarious comedian, uh, Corey Rodriguez, who you may know from Conan, uh, the Mike Huckabee show. He's made the, the whole late night circuit, uh, tour, and you may know him from headlining comedy clubs all over the country. He's a hilarious comedian from Boston. And we talk about everything on this episode, like from arguing politics with friends and family, uh, boxing, and it, I mean, we, we cover so much in this episode. It was really great to have him on. So, uh, without wasting any of you, any more of your time, I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Let's get to the Corey Rodriguez episode. Corey Rodriguez. That was stupid how I said that at the end. Leave it. If it was illegal to say stupid things into a microphone. Why must you be so stupid? These guys would be doing life without parole. Hey, everybody, we're back from prison. Why do we keep encouraging this kind of behavior? It's the Breaking the Ice podcast with Josh Dolan. You know, we could, like, go to jail for this. Along with Mike Shu and Isaiah Moscahanna Vonsa Mana Blitz Boskowitz. Whatever the hell his name is. We gotta do a, hey Mike, before we forget, we gotta do a promo for the fact that we're looking for a sales manager. Fellas, how's it going? What's up, Corey? What's up, guys? Just a you second. Can act, he can help. He can help with our promo. Yeah, we're hiring a sales manager. How how we how are we paying that person? That motherfucker goes out and sells, and we pay them a high commission. We pay them back in poems. Oh. <laughs> no, this is a commission sales job. You okay. go sell. If you go to breakingtheicepodcast.com, you see right there the sponsors, the, the ones we have, and there's that, there's the proposal right there. You go mm -hmm. sell that shit, and we'll pay you a percentage. That's called commission sales. Okay. I guess Wait, that's well, our promo. <laughs> there we go. Work out like our intern did. Yeah, that that that's fuck Undies bailed. Fuck Undies bailed quick. Yeah. <laughs> he spent one afternoon with Josh asking too many questions, and Josh is like, I'm out. <laughs> Well, actually, I th I think he I don't know, I, I he think he's still. I don't know. <laughs> he likes he likes the show. I yeah. Just don't, he, he still he, listens. We need we need people who can sell like good sellers that used to sell WAAF, good sellers that sell the pipe. We need a good salesperson. So we're gonna make this promo and put it out there. What do you think, Corey? You want to do the job? Sounds good, man. As long as you right. say you pay the guy a lot of money, I'm, I'm cool with all that. All that shit but, sounds good. Yeah, we'll pay them a lot of money. Uh, we just got to figure out where we can find that money. That's all. The money is from what they sell. So for okay. every thousand bucks, we'll give you up to two or three hundred dollars of it. How does that sound? That's not. Uh, we're gonna all make the rest. <laughs> oh yeah, I like we we exactly because you are now on this show every fucking week. <laughs> Oh, that is a yes. professional background. I know. I was going to say, are you in some kind of sound stage or something like that? <laughs> Look at that thing, man. Dude, what's, what's with your background you gauge? It. <laughs> I changed Corey. my background. Corey would like to announce he's taken over Conan's old set. So. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, what do you think about that? Conan O'Brien off the late night gig after, what, almost 30 years? Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know. You know, it's never, I feel like it's never dead with with some of these guys like that right like they're right they will all be gone you know so. you said something about hbo max or like uh amazon prime or something so it's probably going to go to a different streaming thing all those guys all those all those streaming networks want it's too it's too um it's too enticing i mean peacock and hbo max and all whatever else there's so many of them now that like i mean even letterman letterman was like i'm done i'm finished and then he was like what's up netflix let's do this <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Well, now I can speak zeros really. on that. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> late night it's, talk it's show hosts are like boxers. They say they're retiring, but they're back in six months. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> it's hard. I mean, I think it's, it's hard for a lot of, 
I think I think many athletes would do that, like as they have done, just like anybody else. Because once you're out, that's your value. Like it's kind of like your that's who you're known for. That's what you're known for. That's what you're good at. Right. So unless yeah. you pick up some other passion, man, you're going back. <laughs> I think if more football players could do it, they would do it. But they're like, ah, they they just no team wants to take them back after a while. They're kind of yeah. like old news. But like boxers, they're on independent. So if you have a big enough name, people still want to see you, you know? So it's like, it's like the new the new career move is you pick up your profession in another avenue or you just fight a Paul brother. Right. Yeah, exactly. yeah well, that's, that's, the, that's the game right now. Yeah, you beat sure. up a YouTube star. Yeah, sure. Be, sure. If I could make 100 grand doing that, that'd be fantastic. I, think I want to see Mike Shue fight Paul. But Logan Paul? <laughs> I'd love that. Just give me a chance. Get- You'd get killed in like three seconds, but hey, hundred grand. I don't know. I take a nut with me though, definitely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, seriously. That's the thing. When I watch some of these fights, sometimes you wonder, like, the resolve of the person who's actually getting their ass kicked. A lot of times, <laughs> I need to see a blooper reel of people who actually can't handle getting fucked up like that, and they actually just bite the person more than like Mike Tyson bit the air because he was getting butted, right? But I'm saying someone who just kicks you in the stomach, who's like, all right, enough, enough with you, enough. Because it's I'm like, bad. you're getting beat up within the rules. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what what, what, what it would have taken for Conor McGregor? Because he wanted that money, though. Because the money, if you don't care about the money, it's like, and you, and, and then you, it's it's, it's just, let me, let me let me backtrack. What I'm trying to say is that it shows you the power of money. Right. Because otherwise, you were getting your ass beat in front of a lot Ever. of people, and you could neutralize the situation with a kick, or 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 like a forearm or a choke hold, anything. <laughs> but you instead, you're just like, I'm just gonna keep getting punched and trying this thing that is not working for me. Because if I do anything wrong, I won't get the money that right. I deserve. That's crazy. When do I cast a check? When do I cast a check? Black, black, black. Yeah, whack, that's whack, crazy, whack. right? Because Connor, Connor easily could have kicked. Could have kicked Floyd in the stuff. He could have did. He could have did a lot of terrible things, right? Oh, yeah. But in the stand-up game, he's not winning. So <laughs> it was like you got to think. And as 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 quick as he flips and everything else, he was like, "Nope, I'm good. I need that. That check is that check's gonna change my life." Right? <laughs> he's like, "You can hit me with a car if you want to." Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I think it was in the and it was in their contract too. That fight, it was in their contract that if he did anything illegal or outside of the thing that they that like forfeited his his money or whatever so he was like really bound to to keeping it oh that's right that was, those were boxing rules right so he couldn't turn around and do the psycho mma shit to him couldn't he, he couldn't do anything and it was like literally in the rules that like you okay. don't get the money like you get docked so much of the money or whatever so it was just so, like he was like i'd nope. stand like this for nine rounds <laughs> <laughs> and i'll only jab just to be right. safe <laughs> Well, that's that's what the Logan Paul fight was like. That Floyd Mayweather came out and he was just like, you know, I just got, you know, whatever, how much you ever got paid. Yeah. And he goes, and that was like the big, the best fake fight money I've ever gotten in my life. Right. Like he called it a fake fight, and then he said, "I'm the greatest bank robber ever." Yeah, <laughs> that's I, I heard Floyd say that, and it was so disappointing to hear him say that. But then, right. on on top of it, it was almost like is. As much as it's it's weird, it's almost like it's almost like he's reverse psychology right here, right? Be- and I and I'm only saying that because I feel like he wanted to do more than what he did, and I feel like they wanted a little bit more to happen than what happened. Mm-hmm. But since it didn't, it's easier for him to save face and say, "Oh yeah," because so many people are probably like, "Why you didn't do more with him? You could have right. did more." And he's like, "Oh, it was a fake fight," and it was almost like, "I don't know, I don't know." I feel like. I feel like Floyd could have, should have knocked him out or whatever. But then his real reactions in the ring in the moment was like, "Yo, I just, I wasn't prepared as prepared as I should have been." And blah, blah, I'm blah, just oh, here he, for the check. I'm here for the check. Yeah, right. you know what I mean. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't completely buy that it was all fake. Even though it's like he's tricking me right now, right? It's like, right. it's like that mind fuck way, like. Where you like you show up to to you show up to someone's house you're gonna sleep with and you don't bring a condom you're like nothing's gonna happen but you know when you don't have it that's when it goes down. <laughs> yeah. you show it, it's like that weird little mind fucking that he's doing he's playing around like that because I feel like I think that it was fake from the beginning, but now he's telling me it's fake. I'm like nah 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 that part wasn't fake. That wasn't <laughs> right? fake. And especially coming from like a, a show business background, you you think like I know that there's fake stuff and yeah. like how it's like that that trickery. Like 
I remember when we were on AF and LB quit that day and everyone was like, oh, this is staged. And I was like, I promise you it's not staged. And then um, what's his name? Matt Siegel like walked off the air on Kiss 108 like a month ago. And I was like, oh, that was fake. And I was like, oh, my God, am I one of those people? (laughs) (laughs) Right. right. Like, no, it's probably real. (laughs) I think we're all twisted right now, too, in the sense where in like the world, we don't know what is real and I, fake. I've I've never argued with so many friends and family and had so many like just just like quiet internal disagreements with another family member or or friend and just being like, "Man, what are you what are you watching? What are you right. doing?" Like, nobody <laughs> believes anything. Yeah. Nobody like, believes they'll, they'll be like, "Ah, that's that that did, that's not really the truth. It didn't really happen like that. They knew that in 1995. They already knew that." Like everything right. It's bullshit. It's, right. I can't even. It's, it's like it, arguing politics isn't even arguing politics anymore. It's like no. we're both looking at an orange car, but you're saying it's a bicycle and it's yellow. Right. Like right, what? right, right, right. It's <laughs> painted. To, it's, it's yeah. Th- that's such a good point, Josh. Because someone will be like, you know, it's yellow underneath the orange, and it's like, but we're not talking about what's underneath. Is it orange? <laughs> it depends on what angle. Because oh, if it's yellow and you're like, this is crazy. This is yeah. like people and it's like with everybody, you're butting heads like this now. And it's like I, I mean, as far as like the world. And so like you, you I'll get one set of messages from friends that's all that's constantly like doom and gloom on the world. They'll right. send me every trans thing they can find. Look at this trans athlete trying to take it over. And then I got other friends who, who are oblivious. They don't know shit nothing and it's like i i hate both sides of them i hate the ones who think they know everything (laughs) and i hate my friends that don't know anything it's like you didn't see there was a train accident today no i didn't know i didn't know i didn't know nothing it's like how do you know nothing but you're focused on a trans athlete in lithuania so it's like (laughs) (laughs) well it's like the, the you know the internet so if it's online if they see it online whether it's social media or they see it on a news site even if that news site has like it's like called like you know super news and it's totally misspelled you know and it's just some guy in his basement in des moines who's like i hate the world right as if you see it and it's presented well on the internet you'll think Real. it's the truth it's Real. like anything you could yep. It's like, you know, news people or salespeople, you know, we're talking about salespeople earlier. You come confident, they'll believe anything you say. It's like there's Chinese tanks from Muslim, from a a special Muslim brigade that they pulled Muslim troops out of Western China and they set them up along the Afghan border to take over. Once we pull out of there, they're going to move in and they're going to help the Taliban. They're a fully, you know, Chinese volunteer force. And it's like, oh my God, (laughs) really? And it's like, no, I just made that up. No, I saw that story. That's not a real story. Right, right, right. You know, and it's like someone, someone will believe it. They won't click the link to see it's like, oh, it's a joke or it's total bullshit. They'll just read the headline and go oh fuck we're fucked oh it's followers too it's yeah. fine if you have if you have enough followers and you Ugh. like you said mike if you present yourself in a way that's why i think twitter is the dead center of satan's asshole i hate that fucking thing because <laughs> yeah. everybody can just fucking boom and oh he's got you know two million people following him some i, I figured something out Corey. with the people that are like that fuck with them you poke them a little bit yeah. i did that to a friend of mine this morning who is and I don't care if you're right or left. I live in yeah. the middle. I try to listen. I, it doesn't matter which way you go. But this fucking guy is so far out on the right tip wing of the plane. The thing is fucking tilting down. <laughs> so I know how to fuck with him. And this morning, I read something <laughs> about uh, the governor of Florida, who is a crazy Republican, yep. and Donald Trump. They're starting to fight with each other, right? Almost like the cancel culture is kind of eating each other. Yep. These two motherfuckers are starting to fight for, you know. And, I, and I, so I text him. I said, all right, hot shot. Who's it going to be? Governor Ron or Donnie Trump? Fucking yep. doesn't answer. He right. fucking like, fuck you, asshole. I'm like, right, oh, right, right. Question. You're the Republican. Right. I just, I think it's oh, just it's like professional people. wrestling now. Right. It's like, you know, they're, they're all going to dinner together later on that right. night. But yeah. <laughs> this is exactly, that's why I said to somebody one, this is exactly what it is. We are all fighting each other. And it's just like professional wrestling. They leave and go to IHOP after they get. They jump in the same van, you know, they hug in the same right. car, and they go eat, you know what I mean, and talk and about the matches that they the had. next night, you know, they're like, hey, tomorrow night, grab me by the leg and flip me over. You know, it's, you know, right. they're, they're planning it out. How are we going to stir up this side? And how are we going to stir up that what side? What was that cartoon with the with the wolf and the dog? Remember back in the day? It, the, the, the dog was... That was not a sheep. cartoon. That was a dream you had. 
No, I did a little bit of acid. They would punch in. They would punch in at the beginning of the day. The sheepdog and the right. uh, and the coyote. Oh, that's yeah. funny. That's funny. Yeah. That's the, that's and, and the so same. they would battle all day. It would be. Yeah. It would be. It would be just like the coyote and the roadrunner all of a sudden right. saying, "Fuck it, let's just." Go but it's even in real sports. I I know I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but like when I started covering the Bruins. And like I became friends with some of them, and I would see them out at like a bar or restaurant, and with we'd be Canadians. talking. And then a Canadian would come over. I'm like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, "Oh, now I can't hate them because he's nice." And then it's <laughs> it, so it just takes that anger. It's like all the fans, the Canadians fans and Bruins fans are fighting, and then they go out to like Capitol Grill after. But you see it when the Red Sox play the Yankees. Sometimes you'll, you'll uh, especially with Jerry Remy on Nesson because it's great because he's fucking old school seventies. I absolutely, you know, Jim Rice will tell you the same thing. Yeah. No friends on the Yankees. But you'll see, like, a Devers get out to second base and, you know, give a little fist pump or what's up to his boy on the Yankees. And Jerry Remy will be on that going, I would never. I would well, that's because that, that, he played back when players actually, when rivalries right. were real. Like, well, like I remember Bill fight. Lee being like, if I ever see that guy, I will go after him again. <laughs> like that. I think it's because well, they got paid way less and they were more angry. Yeah, <laughs> astronomical amounts of money, and they're like, "Hey, how's you know how's your agent doing for you? You know, did you get this endorsement?" They're just talking sure. finances when they're at first base. I know? heard you make two hundred and forty million to pitch. Can I come over this weekend? What are we? What are we fucking doing? I think I think two two things about that. One is exactly I think it's they were getting paid less, and they probably were a little bit more. I don't know if they were angry because they're still getting more than the regular person, but <laughs> I think. I think what it was is that is that there's no loyalty to the players anymore from the organizations. Right. Right. So they know that. So why the hell are they going to be mad at someone that they could be friends with? So people are upset when football players exchange jerseys and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, look at this. This is just is crazy. But it's they don't care. That's what they're going to do. They're going to have a good time. They're going to talk. They're going to admire each other. They're like, yo, this dude's really skilled. Like, Like, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you always see the fraternity of like, especially more nowadays, right? Like the last 10 or 15 years, you'll hear way more. And, and again, I'll, I'll go back to football, for instance. You'll hear them say things like, hey, man, like we're not really trying to take this dude out of the league. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I want to win, but I'm not trying to like right. break yeah. his leg. I'm not trying to stop him from feeding <laughs> yeah. his family or right. whatever. But it wasn't like that before. Before it was like, I want you dead. Yeah. Like, when I hate you, I don't ever want you to get up again. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, your kneecap broke? Sorry. Like, you know what <laughs> good. I, mean? like, I meant to do that. So. I, I meant to do that. Yeah, good. Like that, that still exists a little bit in hockey. Where The one thing I do, I love yeah, But there's one hockey. or two guys, and they get singled out by the rest of the league. Right. Like a Matt well, Hook it's... or a Sidney Crosby. <laughs> oh, but in hockey, maybe it's because it's more of a violent sport where I think, like, you know, you'll, you'll hit someone hard and be like, good, fuck you. You spit your teeth up. Don't care. But <laughs> the best part is at the end of, and you'll see it at the end of all the playoff series, Regardless of whether or not you and I just beat the fucking snot out of each other, got to line up, got to shake each other's hands and say, love you, buddy. Good job. Yeah, it's it's called sportsmanship. And I oh, think I love that. That's the best fans, thing about the NHL. The fans, you know, don't want that. The fans want it to be like a gladiator fight. The fans right. get passionate about it. And you want your fans to be passionate. But, you know, the fans want blood. Yes. You know, this is this is the circus maximus thing, you know, and they want to get in there. They want to see bones sticking out of legs and they want to <laughs> see people spitting out teeth and stuff like it's like people go to NASCAR. Do people go to NASCAR really to watch the race the crash. No. The crash. You're hoping to see someone crash and then someone <laughs> go up in a fireball. That's what you want in a NASCAR <laughs> race, you know, so yeah. it's, it's just like the fan. And that's like, you know, to you can apply that to everything. You know, it's, yeah, what's it's, your thought uh, when you go to hockey? Will there be a fight tonight? Right. Yeah. But like when a, team, when a team wins or loses like a championship, what do people do? They celebrate right. and then they go out and they overturn cars and they set them on fire. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, OK, well, not even the players are that excited. OK, it's like, they, yeah, well, because you know. the players aren't down there on the field getting shit faced. Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's just it's it's like people forget about, you know, it's it's just a game. Right. Yeah, you know they forget about that kind of thing. This is it makes me wonder thing. about like why people go see comedy shows because sometimes I feel like they go to see the comedian bomb and they all had a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like that less. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my advice would be don't tell a cancer joke at a cancer benefit and you'll be fine. So. Oh <laughs> yes! Wow. Yeah, Oops. I mean there is. Yeah, there is that. Uh, 
there is a level of uh, awareness that I think you should have. It, it definitely not tell a cancer joke at a cancer Read benefit. the room. Yeah. Or yeah. tell me it's a cancer Fire. benefit. Or, or read the poster. <laughs> you know? oh. Yeah, read the poster. Read the poster. I don't read. <laughs> Dude, that's like, wait, did you do that? Yes. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I think we talked about it when we had Mark Riley on. It was, it, he, he's the one that booked me. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I haven't been asked back, so yeah. <laughs> I don't I think, think uh, be fucking calling you anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, the, the, some of those some of those situations are rough, man. I mean, classically, you hear many comedians talk about. We'll talk about what what sucks is just like you know, you'll be in a situation where someone lost their kid to whatever uh, disease or something like that, and then you know they'll be like they'll play a video. And then, you know, everyone's crying and they'll be like, you guys ready for some comedy? And then it's like, that's the <laughs> classic situation that we get stuck in many times. And then you got to like flip that room around. It's just And you're the because, only comedian. Oh, if you're the only Ooh. comedian, it's just, it's, it's, it's even, it's even <laughs> worse. But it's like, what do you do? Because you want, because your natural instinct as a comedian, I'm not going to lie. Like in a situation like that is to be like, well, you know what I mean? Like you want to say something fucked up about that video, like crap, you know? <laughs> Woo! That's where you because that's where your brain you 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 make light of moments that are heavy, right? And right. so they're bringing you into some doomy and gloomy shit, and now your job is to be like, you guys ready to rock and laugh and have some fun? And it's like, no, nah, man, I want to cry too. What the fuck, man? I'm the, you know. That little dude, you couldn't have got him a better haircut on his final days, like right. what the fuck? <laughs> you know. You want to say something? <laughs> It's messed up, but you're thinking something like that. But instead, you got to be like, "All right, everybody, what a beautiful video!" All right, get it. I love great desserts here this evening. You guys, yeah. you, you made this cake. Wow. You made the cake, right? You got to muddle through that first two or three minutes. Twenty minutes just to get going. To get going, you got to muddle it through. See people like, oh, yeah, the cake was good, huh? A little too sweet, huh? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Here's a laugh. Sweet laugh right there. There we go. There we go. <laughs> well, isn't that what com- isn't that what comedy is though? It's like, it's like the the um, icebreaker. Well, kind of, yeah. It's like it's it's something you're not that's not supposed to be funny, I guess, right. and and like it's or it's something that is awkward like that that produces the laugh. Well, you want to have that. Ooh, that's fucking funny. Moment. Well, it's more that's of a surprise. Hard. Like you you think you're going to be turning right and then you go left. <laughs> right. Yeah. So there's 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 whack, that whack. there's all all three of those things are right, and then there's just funny. There's right. people that you hang with that you're not surprising, that you're not misdirecting, that you're not anything. You're just talking. I know you all have friends that just talk and they're funny as fuck. When they tell stories, sometimes you just look at your other friends and everybody's just fucking cracking up. And it's just the way they're saying the story. They're not trying to trick you. They just they just start talking and you're just like, oh man, I love you. It's just some people have that. They have yep. it. You know what I mean? Whether right. they're on stage or just at the barbecue, at the cookout. Some people have it. You have an uncle, a uncle or a family member or a cousin or someone who says shit funny. When they come around and they start talking, you're just like, this motherfucker always knows the funny shit to say. How but do it doesn't always, always translate to the stage, which is crazy. Right. It like, doesn't always translate to the stage, but you just have that person. Because my yeah. mom is always doing it where she's like, that was hilarious. You need to do that on stage. I'm like, that, but they would have needed to be here right now for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I need to recreate this whole scene. Yeah, so <laughs> that's got to be the hardest part of uh, stand up comedy. I mean, for years, I, I had the whole again, you're, you're in a small room like this. I'm looking around, I see Josh, I see Mike, I see Corey. You can fuck around, we can laser hit, and then you got to put that on stage. How the fuck you can't, unless I can be right up and talking to the people in the front row? That terrifies me. I spent 30 years in radio, had no issue. I can make the room laugh all fucking day yeah. if I have 10 minutes to read the room. Yeah. But I feel like if I ever tried to write that shit down, it would be a B O M fucking B. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I Hi like... everybody, I can't see you, and this is fucking awful. Shit. I feel like the secret to that shit, though, the secret to it is because that's exactly how I used to feel. Like I used to, I never thought, I didn't think I was gonna be a stand-up or whatever. This wasn't my my focus. Like I was a criminal justice guy. Like I was a, I got a criminal justice degree. I used to work in a lockup. I used to do all this stuff. But like that was never my focus. But I, all my life, I've been around people they've been laughing and i've just i've just been a jovial jokey guy but not like you know why did chicken cross the road jokes just personality just like that's that's who i am and um i was always say things like what you and josh just said i would always say stuff like man 
I don't know how I can get, who's going to even get this? Like, I, <laughs> how am I going to present them with any of this shit? That none of this makes sense. Like, you you know, the, classically, you never want to be like, you had to be there. That's just dumb, right? Like, that's, yeah, right. that's, it's bad if you ever have to say that on stage. So you <laughs> don't, right? You know, I hear a lot of early comedians saying that. So then I was like, well, what is it? And, and I, for a long time, I couldn't figure out what is it? How am I able to do this? After I was doing it for a while, how am I able to even do this shit? You know, I have these ideas off stage. How am I bringing these things to stage? And it's just a lot of stuff can go on stage. You just have to find what the soul of the shit is that you're talking about. They're right. not going to care. They're not going to care so much about what was funny in that exact moment unless it's, you can translate it properly. Right. But if you can find out what that emotion was that affected you in that moment, everybody can relate to that emotion, how you felt, the discomfort of that shit. Like, as we were sitting here talking about when I just told you guys, oh, yeah, we're on stage and they play a video and, and there's a little kid and he's dead. You're all in that moment of like, man, I'm uncomfortable as shit right now. Like, that would be a weird situation. And then it's like you pop that ice like, oh, man, this little dude could use a haircut. Now, we laughed at it. Why do we laugh at that? That shit's funny. It's weird. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. Right. It's, but it's, it's like you're making fun of a dead child, kind of. So it's not supposed. That's what I was talking about earlier. It's yeah. that. It's that. Uh, it, I don't, I, there's a word for it, not juxtaposition, but it's kind of juxtaposition, when, though. Kind of when you're not supposed. It's something that's not supposed to be funny, and you're confronted with it, and it just all you. It makes you laugh for some. And it is funny, right? And, yeah. and it's also the. It's also the. We all were just in that feeling for a second, though. That right. moment of like. That's what it feels like when you can bring those feelings to the stage, like that emotion of like, this is what I was in. And you can paint that picture and people can see that, you know, now, of course, there's one line jokes. That's something different. I'm not I'm not. Uh, that's not me. I don't do that. I don't make yeah. up shit. I don't go. I don't just make up stuff. I talk real shit. It so, was a lot of chicken right. cross the road. Don't yeah, I don't I don't do a lot of one liney <laughs> stuff like, you know, time machine. I don't do that shit. I don't know it. I don't do it. But if you're talking real and you can get into that emotion, you can always get somebody laughing because someone's feeling that shit. They're feeling it. You know what I mean? Like, dude, on your website, when you were talking about fucking McDonald's food, and you know, it's a bad idea before you even get to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, right. every other fucking human being in the world. No right. disrespect to McDonald's, but it's like, I'm eating this. It sucks here. Let alone before it gets to my stomach. By the time it gets to my stomach, I'm fucking <laughs> You know, it's a bad idea when it's still in your mouth. Yeah, but yeah, that, yeah. Like, but that, that, the fries, that stuff... you were talking about fries that you found. When, when mold looks at food and says, I don't eat that shit. That's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> but like that kind of stuff, like the situational stuff, like being at, um, like a benefit like that, because I was, yeah. I'm picturing a, a benefit where I completely bombed. I was in the same kind of situation. It was like, there was a video and it was for a kid that had cancer and yeah. they, he was a huge Yankees fan and he hadn't been outside in like a year and they like presented him with a game worn Derek Jeter uniform. And then he, they were like, and come get it. And then it was like a standing ovation. They were playing Katy Perry, Eye of the Tiger or something whatever it was and everyone's crying i was crying and then all of a sudden he gets the thing and he says like thank you into the microphone and then they're like and now josh dolan with comedy and i was like no <laughs> absolutely I, I was so i was maybe like two years in then and i didn't have the experience on how to i was i should not have been the i shouldn't have been on the show but i should <laughs> i was only two years in which is basically open mic level yeah. And I didn't know how to like, I I didn't have the experience to like, yeah. def, like acknowledge it. Now brush that aside, and now here we go. And it, I think a lot of that comes with experience. And one of the best at it, I think, is Bill Burr, because yeah. I remember at Comics Come Home, it was the day after Trump won when the Wanda election. Sykes went that shit. Yes, and then Nick DiPaolo came out and went the other way. They both bombed, yeah. so it was two yeah. sets booing. And then they had Bill, he was supposed to close and he just came out and he was like, all right, who wants to fucking talk politics? And then what? that got rid of all of it. And then he just went into his airplane jokes. But I was sitting right next to you for that. And we were watching Wanda came out and lost her fucking shit. Nick lost his fucking shit. We're like, oh, this is uncomfortable as fuck. Yeah. And you're right. Bill came out and just went, stop it. We're done. <laughs> yeah. And, and then yeah. I was talking to Bob Kelly. And he was like, do you know how I felt? I wasn't supposed to close. And then I had to follow that and Bill Burr. <laughs> <laughs> how did Bobby? How did Bobby end up doing? 
Oh, he killed it, of course. He killed it, yeah. Oh, yeah, he just yeah. murdered. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what jokes he did, but I... Yep. Oh, he's, I, think oh, that, he's I mean, That's like, good. there's those subjects that, that for a long time, that it was like, what was it? You, sh- you can't talk about the Holocaust or AIDS. And there was like three things you can... Now that list is a lot longer. Honestly. Right. Um, but there are certain comics who could... You know, so like, uh, you know, and this, I don't know, this may be a bad example now, but Louis C.K., mm-hmm. you know, his, his, nine, his 9-11. No, he's a good, good example. He would make me laugh. You no, know, that 9-11 joke about, you know, he had just enough time to snap one off between the twin, <laughs> I'm just paraphrasing, between the towers falling. Yeah. Right? And I was like, thank, I can't thank believe Thank you for I'm, paraphrasing that. Thank I know. You. I was like, I can't believe I'm hearing this, and I'm laughing my ass off. And that's, right. again, that's that thing where it's like, I'm not supposed to be, this isn't supposed to be funny. But yeah. for some reason, this guy's making it funny. Because it's it's the the his intent, and I think the angle he's coming at it from, because, like, I know comedians, and Corey, I'm sure you do too, know comedians who, like, sit down and they're like, all right, I'm going to write racial humor. And like Louis C.K. has a great joke that is, where he was like, I can get in the time machine and go anywhere, anytime, and I'll be fine. Right. And, and I'm still he, white. <laughs> he says a line where he's like, I'm, I'm not saying white people are better, but I'm saying being white is clearly better. And like right. you can hear people laughing at that for the wrong reason, but it's like, no, don't you understand why that's funny? Like he was like, if, if you're of this race or this race, I wouldn't go past 1980, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> but it's like, right, right, I know right. other people that are like, I want to write some racial material. And then it just comes off as like, uh, you just yeah. think uh, well, everybody, racial stuff, <laughs> you, but you can be good at, you can be good at something and not, you know right. what I'm saying? That's just it. You have to, know how to, deliver you, have, it. You have, to have a skill set. It, it takes a, the, the fact that, 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 that joke is, it's layered because it's it's a good joke. It's a good bit. Like it is true that right. it was worse for people at different times. So it's a funny joke. Once you, the cool thing about a, about a joke or about a bit or about whatever is when you can think about. It's been thought about from many different angles when you listen right. to it. So that's what really makes you laugh. That's the type of shit I like. I don't just like something where I can poke a hole in it immediately. I don't like someone who's like, everybody has a dad who acts like this. It's like, no, you don't. Because as soon as you don't have a dad that acts like that, you shut down. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like you have to approach that from a different angle. Some people have dads that act like this. Now, you're, now your mind is open and your brain is searching for some other dad that you do know that acts like that. And you'll connect it. But if someone tells you everybody has a dad like this or everybody has an uncle like this, you shut down. Because you're like, I don't. If you don't immediately, you're like, I don't. Ah, this is oh, stupid. I don't have one like that. Yeah. Dude, you, you, you hit it right on the head, which was, which was uh, I can't remember what clip I was watching where you were up and you were talking about the motherfucker coughing on an airplane, right? Yeah, right. Every <laughs> single fucking human. Dude, when we started this podcast, we were in person, right? Then we had to jump on this because fucking COVID. And, and, and one of the first episodes the three of us did, Mike was in his car. And he's got a fucking mask on. I'm like wrapped up in a fucking head turn. We're just fucking around. We're like, we're not sure where to go. And Mike yeah. made a good point. He goes, you literally can't cough. Coughing is like screaming the worst racial obscenity. And yeah. you nailed it in your stand-up bit where you're like, this fucking guy is coughing and making this wheezing sound behind me. <laughs> and every motherfucker on the plane is ignoring it. But then they're like, yeah, no, 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 no. I, I see it, but we're not going to look. And then you look right. behind the seat and the guy's coughing right in your face. One hundred percent of the population knows what that is. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> so is, you, does like comedy to be funny, does it have to have truth in it? Right. You can't. It, or is it is it possible to, to like to do comedy without being completely honest about something like having sure. truth in it? or you can't just use your imagination and come sure up. Sure, you can or, Sure you can. That, I don't like that. I don't like being able to see through it. I don't like plenty of people have used their imagination. I wouldn't know if it if they do it the right if they do it right the right way. But I don't like making up stuff because then I can't get behind it and then I'm not I don't I can't create the stems off of it and go to the different areas that I want to go to if I'm not being truthful. It's like a dead end street. Right. Yeah. Well, you want to speak from experience. You want to be like, dude, I went through this and I and I and, and be far enough to know like the coughing thing. I know you motherfuckers have been through this. <laughs> yeah, and, and the way it makes me feel and all the different aspects of what was really going on. And so it's like, 
at a certain point when I first when so so when I first started I would I would I I, I remember I would just I remember this uh, this dude named Dick Doherty who used to run uh, mm, you know uh, Dick Doherty's comedy back in the day he was, you know he was like one of the one of the OGs in Boston uh, yeah. he I remember one time we were doing a show this was like my second year third year and something like that I was doing a show and I went to the show I rocked out the show or whatever. And I was working with him, you know, I was, me and him were working together. He was headlining. I, I think I was featuring at the time, maybe hosting or featuring. And so when I got done, he was like, he goes, you, he goes, you were good. He goes, you were good. He goes, but, <laughs> but he goes, you, he goes, you weren't great. And he goes, you know why you weren't great? He goes, because you were doing what they wanted you to do. He goes, you weren't doing what you should do. And I was like, and I was just thinking like, man, I don't want to hear this shit, man. I just fucking killed like this dude. He's telling me this shit. You know, like I'm thinking like this old time shit. I don't want to hear this old time fucking advice. Like, you know, because because in my mind, I just killed. He did OK. He didn't kill that night. I killed that night. And it, so then in my head, I'm just like, oh, he's just like he's he's keeping me uh, uh, humble. You know what I'm saying? He's telling Proud me this shit. Yeah. So I just stay down. I'm, but in my head, I'm like, I fucking killed it. And um. <laughs> Over the years, like you know, sometimes people pass knowledge on in the game. Just in every in every profession, you do it long enough, you'll get all these nuggets along the way. And sometimes you can't apply them yet. You're not ready to eat the nuggets yet, man. You know. And then and then once you're able to apply them, like oh shit. And so late, much later on, I just realized that like how right he was because yeah, I was doing things at the time that I thought people would think are funny if I said it. I was just good at doing it but like it wasn't necessarily what i thought was 100 percent funny i just know that oh they'll laugh at this so yeah. whatever that meant to do i was doing those things um and then as you get better i only do shit now that i think is funny the test of whether or not something gets on stage that i'm doing is whether or not i think it's funny if i don't think it's i'm i'm the bar if I don't think it's funny, I'm not saying it. I don't give a fuck if somebody let somebody else do that if you like doing that other thing or whatever that is. But like I'm not gonna just pander to make the people laugh. Right. You know what I mean? So it's kinda like kinda works together. So it, it and what eventually starts to happen is the better you get at what you're doing, the more the closer those things get. And yep. so what you start to realize is what you think is funny is is what they think is funny. And you'll start to filter some people out and that's fine. I don't want everybody to like me. I want the people that like my <laughs> shit to fucking wipe their eyes and cry. And the ones who don't to be like, I don't want to see no. him again. Cool. Don't come back. But it's, 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 it's kind of like, I, I wish like you could get that advice and it clicks right away and you're like, Oh, okay. Thank you. But yeah. it's like, even that advice that I feel like is that most comedians get is find your voice. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, well, I wrote all these jokes. So, it's my voice. It's my voice. But then it wasn't voice. until I realized I was talking about things that happened to me that yeah. like like when, when I talk about the DUI I got when I was sober and yeah. like that entire story and it's like people are laughing it but I'm like actually angry behind what I'm saying <laughs> but they're laughing at it and I'm like oh yeah this is way better than you know trying to make like a giraffe going into a thing funny but right. Right. <laughs> which right. was no, sure. I don't repeat it but and it feels good. It feels good when you do the shit that way. Yeah. Right. Be because you're 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 authentically coming up with things that you care about. Like when you got you guys on the radio, your point of view, when you're dropping your real point of view on something, you're not like, I don't wanna I don't wanna offend it. You saying how you really feel about some shit. You feel empowered because there'll be a bunch of people calling in. You know what you want, and they call it in and they're like, hey, I couldn't agree with you more. I say, I, I, I agree. I agree. Mike, that's the shit. I agree. Right, I agree. Right. Or, like, or yeah. go fuck yourself. Right. Yeah. But it's or, also or, like that that or, constant need to be liked where it's like you you don't have the confidence yet to to do, you, like talk with your voice. Right. Like you're doing what you think a comedian should do or what a radio person should do. I remember when I really started talking on the radio a lot when I was doing Afternoons or Shoe, that I remember at first I was like, I was like, what, what should I say here? And then it wasn't until I remember when it switched for me, when you and Carrie were talking about fluff and utters and I was just like, it slipped out. And I was like, what's a fluff and utter? And everyone like Massachusetts lost their fucking mind. Yeah. <laughs> it was completely honest. Like Josh had never had a fluff and utter in his life. And right. 
uh, apparently the majority of people listening thought that was just ridiculous. And so it, and that's what you want. You want, like Isaiah said, or they could say, fuck you yeah. either way. <laughs> But then I kind of like that too when they're like "fuck right. you" and I'm like, "Well, you took the time to say fuck you, so <laughs> you're you're it's provoking someone to react, right?" And it, the worst thing they could do is just say like, "Yeah, that was that was all right," or exactly. "that was pretty fun," and not say anything. But you 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 inspired someone to pick up their phone and go, "You are a complete fuck up." Yeah. <laughs> but then I got addicted to that. Like everything, I was like, oh, "I don't know what 128 is." Say it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's your thing. That's like, you know, all, Josh like grew up in some kind of, I always used to say Josh grew up in some kind of Amish sex cult because he has no clue about, you know, fluffy hey, nutters, what 128 is. He's like yeah. just completely clueless about a lot of stuff. That he never like, gets any know. of the movie references. It's insanity. Yeah, he didn't see any movies in his I life. only watched mm-hmm. Dwayne's World. That was it. And so. That's kind of your thing. You're, you were uh, that for that particular role. That was your like, you know, clueless Josh. Yeah. You know, and but you want that reaction, whether right. they say, you're the best or man i wish you were dead yeah it's, to me that's like an equal thing you've riled somebody up whether it's positive reaction. or negative as long as 100 percent don't say i wish you were dead but that right. but that that, that fluff and utter day is the day that that all like clicked in my head because it was up until then i was like before i would be like i don't know what a fluff and utter is don't say anything <laughs> <laughs> but then after that i was like huh maybe just be me and then I would just be me and people would lose their mind. So, <laughs> well, and, and one other thing too, what's cool about that is that you can defend from a point of real because right. you're being honest. So like, if they were like, you don't know what I was like, no, I don't have to know what that is. Like I don't, and I'm still here and I'm still alive. I didn't eat a fucking fluff and nutter, but I'm alive <laughs> and I ate other shit. I know what peanut butter is. I've heard of fluff, but I have never had a fluff and nutter. Okay. So, but so it's like because you can defend from a place of real. I love shit like that. That's when you're standing on your own too, right there, you know, as opposed right. to, you know, trying to waver like, oh, fluff, oh, sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. Like, you know, like, no, no, I don't. And <laughs> yeah. maybe I'll have one one day. You know what I mean? Maybe I had some shit you haven't had before. You right. Know? Taking the shit is the best. I caught so much shit. Now, AAF was playing tool all the time and we did a broadcast before the tool show we get into the tool show it clearly is stated all over the fucking arena don't take pictures what does isaiah do takes out his fucking phone takes a picture trust me i got to use that against myself for the next number of months but i'm busting my own dick and right. everyone listening is going can you not fucking read moron i'm like yeah, yeah. you know i was fucking hammered and i'm like i'm gonna get a video they grabbed my phone they threw me out and, and every time we play tool i'm like yeah yeah, I got thrown out of a tool show. And I didn't know for the past 10 years that Maynard James fucking Keenan doesn't want someone videoing his bullshit. But it was real. And everybody would everybody would listen to it. Or, or when you go on the radio yeah. and it's after the Red Sox are playing the Yankees and it's the fucking fourth game of the ALCS. Goddamn thing got over at 1.30 in the morning. We're all fucking exhausted. And you crack that mic and your voice is raspy. And that's And you yeah. connect. Whether you're a Yankees fan or a Red Sox fan, you're fucking tired yeah. and you're either happy or elated. Those are radios are kind of a different thing though, because you 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 don't you have to look at the reaction and go, I'm killing it or I'm bombing. We can at least go, yep, and shut the mic off and kind of scoot back from <laughs> right, it. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. That was that was a scary feeling the first time I ever talked into a radio mic on WZLX when I was an intern. And I was yeah. like, Well, I had a stand-up gig last night and I made five hundred strangers laugh. There's no one in this room right now. This will be Island. easy. And then I said um, something yeah. I thought was funny, and then I was like, "Oh no, I don't know if people are laughing." <laughs> it's like I don't. Yeah. It's like I'm sitting in a room, a padded room, alone, talking into this. <laughs> All of a sudden, that microphone yeah, started no getting idea. really small. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but as time went on, it went from the phone to more so the text. And Michael does this, and so will Josh. Now you you say something, and that fucking thing goes off like a vibrator, and yeah, and yeah. that could be an entire shows worth of content in that text line because these people just reacted to i said something i knew i could relate to that whatever about metallica or yeah. acdc or country whatever it is and and you but when that fucking thing doesn't go off kind of like you just said josh you're like is your radio broken <laughs> <laughs> you want that reaction whether it's good or bad and i think yeah, boston, no one's listening fuck this is a big station what did i, I just i just bombed yeah. i think i think boston is is pretty uh, unique when it comes to that the Boston market or the New England market because people 
in this area, I believe, love to bust balls more than anybody else. You could say, oh, I don't know, New York, New Jersey, whatever. No. Here, it's like you make one little mistake or you say one little, you think, meaningless thing, and people will latch onto that. And it becomes your nickname. And, and, it's, <laughs> and it's like it's people in this area will just love to give their opinion, whether yep. you want it or not. They want you to have that opinion. So when you're when you're doing comedy, I think when you're doing comedy, let's that's why the Boston comedy scene for so long was like so unique. I right. think because of this unique attitude in this area, and the same thing with radio. Yep. You know, Boston radio is really unique in the sense that you know listeners, especially if you listen to like sports radio, yep. because Boston sports fans are so fucking miserable, or they're just arrogant pricks about whatever it is that they just get and they get riled up about it. And so there's a particular energy, I think, to this area that really just gets, you know, people really passionate about something. And I, that's why I think it's even in this area, it's even more important. If you don't get any kind of reaction, even if it's someone busting your nuts, then you, just, <laughs> yeah. you got to work another angle. You got to do something else. Well, that's also that probably why the, the, the Boston uh, comedy like delivery, like Gavin and um, Sweeney and Tony V and Lenny and Rogerson and all those guys, their, their jokes are like rapid fire. Like they don't stop. Right. And it's, I, I wonder if that's because they're just trying to get hammer you so much that it doesn't leave room for heckling because <laughs> I, everyone oh, wants to give their Matt opinion. Foley. <laughs> Foley. Yeah. They're, no, they're I, I think, huh? I said they're mass holes. They're the same way. They're yeah. the same kind of person that's breaking the dick. I went and saw Lenny at Giggles uh, last week and, 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 uh, and Tony was there too. And a couple other really good comedians, but Lenny, you know, it's the same thing. He doesn't give a fuck. He does not give a fuck. He just gets up there. He's like, whack. And if you don't, he got in an argument with a guy who was like, oh. And Lenny goes to the side of the stage and he's like, what? What? You don't like it? Because you can get the fuck out of this tent on Route 1 in Saugus whenever you like. And the whole place laughs. You know, he just, mm -hmm. he just he's, he's very, he's very mass holy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, they always, they oh, those guys, even you watch old things from back in the day, they've always been like that. And, and I don't think they're <laughs> worried about the, I don't think they're worried about the heckle. It's just a, it's just the command of the room and the style that they have, you know. Um, and all around the country, every, Boston still holds a pretty great prestige as far as stand-up goes for a lot of us that are still coming out of this area or still in the area. We just, we do, we do have a great comedy crowds and we do hold each other to a little bit higher standard. And some of it is self, uh, like what you were saying, like, oh, uh, Boston people love busting balls and they seem a little bit more dicky or whatever. It is true, but we also fuel it, right? So like you saying that is like the person next to you saying that is the person next to them saying that. So then we empower the people who who do do that more often than not. You know what right. I'm saying? You know, right. when I was younger, I used to I used to um I used to eat like I eat a lot of food. So my, my family would always be like, you know, my aunts and stuff would always be like, you all you do is eat. You eat so much food. You eat, you eat. So whenever I'm around them, I always felt like they'd be like, you're going to eat a lot of food. And I'd always be like, whatever. And I would eat more because they were always <laughs> pumping me that like they were fucking with me that I ate. And so it somehow made me have to eat more. And I didn't even want any more of this shit. I just would eat. I'd be like, oh, eat because they know I'm the eater, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I think we do that to to people here. We do it. We we embody the asshole and the massholeness of people. We do have plenty of them, but we we give we give license to even more of them because it's like that's who we are. That's what we do. People think we're like that, even if you're not like that. Wherever I, people they. I'm so uh, I'm weird because I don't like to fight. Like I'll be I'll travel somewhere. I'm doing stand up. I'll be in any random city, Chicago or wherever. It doesn't matter. I'll be in some random city, and someone will find out from Boston. I'll probably be wearing a Patriots shirt or a hat or whatever. Or they'll be like, "Where are you from?" I'm like Boston. I'm like, oh shit. Oh, I don't. You know, immediately they don't like. What are you a like, bank robber? Yeah, yeah. So immediately, well, they don't ask me that. You, you know good at I mean? math? That's, that's you. That's a that's a white dude uh, math question. They ask me. <laughs> they immediately like Jim Charles Town. Immediately, they're asking me. You know, oh, do I like Brady? Do I? What, what do I think uh, yeah. about Belichick? Uh, I can't. You know, they can't believe about uh, uh, Kraft. Or, or, or like, you know, the Red Sox. And, they, and and it's like, when they're talking to me, I say the same thing to people all the time because they're trying to get me going. I don't give a fuck. Like, when I'm, 
when I'm out of town, I'm not arguing with you about my team. I don't know this person. I don't care what your views are, your thoughts. I may throw one jab at you. You may be like, oh, you guys, you guys cheated, whatever. Hey, we still won. We won the games. I don't think they cheated. You say what you're going to say. Cool. I'm done with the shit after that. Right. Yeah. Now they'll keep chirping. And I'll be like, they'll be like, oh, but this is the, because everybody who comes over, they'll be like, that's the, that's the Patriots guy right there. That's the Red Sox guy. Never and said I liked like football. <laughs> and I'll just be like, I'll be like, hey, man, I root for the team, man. I don't play for them. That's it. That's all I say all the time. I root for them. I don't play for them. Shut the fuck up. Get get another set of, get another order of wings and shut the fuck up. I'm not <laughs> mad at you. They're like, or I'll meet people that are Yankees fans. You know, oh, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I like the Yankees. I'm like, cool. I like some of the Yankees too. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm not mad. I'm not inherently mad at someone. I don't play for these fucking, I don't play for them. I don't right. have to be angry. <laughs> You yeah. know, I don't know. Yeah. That's people. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's it's just a game. But yet people base your identity on that. Like, oh, oh you're from Chicago God. or you're from L.A. You're a Lakers fan or whatever. You know, this so that that's your identity. You know, and it's like my when I visit my family in western Pennsylvania, it's in Pittsburgh. It's the hardest Steelers country. Yeah. You know, and it's the same exact thing, Corey. It's like, oh, how are your cheat tree it's doing? <laughs> yeah, you know? right. it's like, I don't, and I don't even follow football that much. I mean, I watch the games, but I'm not like a stats guy or anything. And I'm like, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm the same way. I, I don't know and I don't care. But that, <laughs> the, like, like Corey was saying, like <clears throat> at the beginning, that he was arguing with friends and family so much more now that well, like about like politics became new sports so politics became uh, your identity where yeah, it was right. like there was no sports so it was like i it got to a point last year where i said something about trump not positive or negative i just said his name mm -hmm. and i got called a racist uh, <laughs> just because i didn't say anything bad about him and i was like i i didn't even show support like what do you mean and they're like oh i'm sorry i just i just saw trump's name and i was I was like, okay, well, <laughs> it's yeah. it like you need One to, sport. you know, Awful. being escorted out of the balcony of a Red Sox game or something. Right. It, it was just like before it was like politics or something that you kept to yourself. And then it turned into right. like, well, we don't have sports. So everyone pick a team. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it really has become like you mentioned earlier, like wrestling. Yeah. Really a blood sport. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, they go back to the, you know, wherever their office in, in the Capitol or whatever, and they say, OK, tomorrow, let's say this and see what happens. And or we need to push an agenda or something like that. It, it You know, it, it's it's really it really is like it's become entertainment because right. if you think and not too long ago, you think of someone like um, like Ronald Reagan or Jimmy Carter, mm. you know, it, and it's it wasn't this. It wasn't this vicious, right? No, no it's way more divisive yeah. and vicious now. It, it, there wasn't so much name calling. There wasn't, you know, there wasn't. There people. also was no social media. Yeah, that's true. Or twenty-four hour news cycles. Yeah, but like even McCain and Obama, they would still like compliment each other in the debates, but still like disagree back and forth. But well, it, it wasn't. Like, it wasn't You know, it wasn't it always the, on. It got the illest with with tr Trump. Trump changed the game. Oh. For better or worse, he's the happy he Gilmore of. He changed, he changed <laughs> right. the game as far as as far as respect goes, because we all know at the end of the day, we all knew that they were going back and hanging out. Like when Gabby Gifford, I think Gabby Gifford, right when she got shot, they were all at a they were all at a softball game. Republicans, Democrats, mm -hmm. weren't they all fucking playing softball together? Yeah. Right? Was it a oh, game? No, that's not that's not when Gabby Gifford got shot, but some other, some other guy, some got other, shot. somebody got shot. Yeah. yeah. Some guy rolled up with a gun in his car and just started shooting people. Right. Yeah. And he was exactly. shooting. There was this, all these Democrats, Republicans, they're all, they're yeah. playing softball together. Right? right. So, so, um, so I think, I think then we knew, like, I think even before that, like even with Obama and McCain, like you guys were saying, they still were, it still was like, Oh, you know, it, it's, it's, we're attacking each other, but we're attacking each other with this, like, we're in a very respectful way, but we're jabbing the shit out of each other. Right. right. Trump changed, he, cha he, he changed it so much that, like, it was comical, but fucked up because it gave everybody, it gave everybody, like, the, the empowerment to be an asshole in every situation. <laughs> and they felt like, well, if he can do it, why can't we do it? So it changed the way a lot of people operate it, which 
some ways was good and a lot of ways was bad. You know right. what I mean? Because it yeah. was giving people, it was giving people just, just as much as we feel like, many of us feel like everybody shouldn't have a right to say whatever they want to say online. Yeah. Right? Some yeah. people should shut the fuck up. <laughs> so in real, in real, because they, because people believe everything, right? And they're like, oh, whose fault is that? We can go down that rabbit hole. But I'm saying everybody shouldn't have free license to say whatever. So what happens is in regular life, people were having the license to say whatever. They just were like, they were empowered. You'd be yeah. in any store or whatever, yeah, right? shut like the, the fuck groceries. up and yeah. go back to Mexico. You're like, God right. damn, we're at the grocery store. Right. Like, exactly. the, the, all yeah. the person said was, I can't hear you. Shut the fuck up and go back to Guatemala. <laughs> You're like, what is this shit? Right. You're like, who's this yeah. little old lady just going crazy right now? She's yeah. just taking her cues, bro. Just everybody was going like, Shit would just pop up in places like that. It was nuts. Comedy yeah. shows were nuts. You'd be in the store, you hear something, you'd be like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. Someone's just in someone in the parking lot, go back to your country. You know, it's just drive. It was just, it was like a lot of that shit. A lot of that and shit. And it was like weird, like a lot of like behavior was just like it people were justifying it off their hate of someone else. Like their hate right. for Trump was yeah. like, well, I'm gonna burn down a city. And it was like, well, you're burning down people that agree with you. You're like, you're, it, it just seemed like it was like, why attack your neighbor? Cause you don't like some guy in the white house. And then it was just like, and then it Such flips the other way too. And I'm like, can we just disagree and not be attacking each other? Right. <laughs> like right, you said, right. they're all playing softball together. Right. Yeah. Right, you, right. Could say Clint, you could say Bill Clinton did the same thing for blowjobs. Oh, when he said, I did not have sex. Remember with when that, woman. that was and a big deal? I mean, all of a sudden, <laughs> no. jobs didn't count as cheating. You know? blew you. Yeah. <laughs> but, We're in but, some but, countries, you know. <laughs> But wait, Josh, I will say this, though, because I can't let that slip by. If we're talking about burning down cities and we're talking about like riots and if we're talking about like race riots, and we're talking about things like that. What the, the, the double standard to me is the up in arms that people get in as people burn down things in protest of things. Right. I don't agree. If people should be fucking up people's businesses or whatever. Any way, yeah. shape or form. Right. Right. But a lot of people were peacefully protesting and, and it, were, it only takes a few to fuck things up. OK, yeah. but but if you did have that, the reaction of people that were going crazy. And at the beginning of this podcast, what did we say? When championships are won, what happens? Yeah. We can it's play right. the race back. Cars get flipped over and they get burned. Windows get broke. Poles get ripped down. So the same people that talk shit about that were like, well, well, that, well that, people that, are that, trying that. to fight for rights at that point, And everyone's like, this is fucked up. They're crazy. But we win a championship and flip mm -hmm. over cars and everything's okay. But so it, was, I don't, it I don't... was even more hypocritical than that because it was like all of 2020 people were burning down like Portland, Seattle and stuff. Yeah. And then everyone was like, this is outrageous. How could you be doing this? And then those same people that were outraged by that were defending the the when they attacked the Capitol. And then all those people were for the, it was like everyone just switched right. overnight. And I was like, what just happened? Right, like, right. It was whatever you like yeah, the yeah. the whatever that private society was in seattle and i was like but you're against storming the capitol and all you guys were outraged about that and now i was like i'm done yeah <laughs> I'm done. So that, that's where the that's where the crazy fight happened right because it's like you get all whatever you back it's again the car's yellow or is it painted orange underneath or is it orange on right. top yellow underneath whatever you get behind now you'll have people fighting with you like well i think it was right they should have stormed it and it's like what are you talking about you're the same person who was against the other shit. so it's like right, right. it's like it, that's what gets so annoying and frustrating and you almost got to step out of it part of it is like 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 uh like my girl my girlfriend and, and her mom they're very like um they don't give a fuck about anything like mm. If there's a deal going on, a sale going on, a beach that's opened up or whatever, like, you know what I'm saying? The, the windows are open, the blinds are pulled, the doors are unlocked. Like they're those type of people that it's almost like, um, remember in the matrix when the dude was eating the steak and he was like, ignorance is bliss. You yeah. know what I mean? There's a part of the matrix when he said that and it's, shit, it's true. Like part of it is like, and the only way you can keep your sanity and all this shit going on is sometimes you got to step out and be like one of these people who's just like, Where's the next beach that we can get to? Like, fuck everything. Because if you do, if you stay involved with everything, if you stay locked in, but you're not actually doing anything, you're just hearing it, 
you're going to go crazy Yeah, because right. you're awesome. not doing anything. If you're out there doing something about the stuff that you're hearing about, that's one thing. But if you just hear it and you got to process it and all you got to do is sit there and ruminate in your brain and be like, oh, the world is the world is so fucked up. We're all going to die in a couple of those conspiracy, this conspiracy, that it's like, what are you doing about any of it? If nothing besides just telling me that, you know, stuff or think, you know, stuff. Man, get the fuck out of here you're just stressing me out <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like let's go fucking let's let's go drink some beers and eat some wings and go sit on a beach somewhere and that's and why things out. got so crazy there was no sports and you couldn't go outside so it was just sitting around being like right obsessing well, over that mean, stuff and it was yeah. like i remember i was like maybe three days ago i was driving and i was like huh I haven't been stressing about that kind of stuff lately because everyone's back to just doing life and like right. We're and shut like, it off, shut the news off, shut the social shut media off. bullshit off, man. Like Have when to. it's not an election year, I forget we have a president. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. It was kind of nice to like real. forget again. <laughs> I, think I don't even know if to... Biden is alive or not, but you know, it's <laughs> what can you do? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> what everybody needs to do is they need to go, Corey, to your Instagram and watch the fucking animal videos. <laughs> what animal the videos, fuck man. are you doing, dude? I was pissing my pants today. Are you are you like going for some kind of nature show on Discovery? Or like that? Is it just a, a big audition for that? Uh, no, man, I'm just, just fucking just just trying to keep it rolling, man. Trying to keep trying to keep people laughing, man. Keep them smiling, keep them interested. You know what I mean? And, and they just watch that stuff and be like, "This is crazy." Like, have my own little weird takes on it. You know what I see? These it's these so these good. Animals, you know, it's so you have to go follow him, Corey Rods on Instagram. There's all kinds of stuff about the stand-up, but there's so many fucking animal videos yep. where you're doing this crazy play-by-play. -play. Is that you and some friends, or are you doing all those voices? That's all me, man. It's all my. Oh my god, oh, dude, Planet, you man. you you probably should have like an a comedy show on Animal Planet or something. Yes. Because one of my favorite <laughs> videos of you is interviewing that guy that got attacked by a bear. Oh, it's crazy, bro. Crazy. That job. was it. That, <laughs> that was bananas. So so. For the people who don't notice that what Josh is talking about is uh so I, I work I do cruises as well. So I was on a cruise ship and it was this joke I used to do about being attacked by a bear. And so I would always talk and I would be like, I was always rhetorically, I would be like, when you get attacked by a bear, they tell you what you're supposed to do and all this other shit. So I'm going through the procedure, but I was like, but I always ask this question as I go, I go, no one's ever been attacked by a bear, right? And I'm ready to move on. Like it's rhetorical. No one's ever been attacked by a bear, right? And then just everyone's pointing at this fucking guy. They're like, right there, right there. I'm like, right there. I'm like, so I'm looking out. There's a, there's a step. I'm in front of a thousand people in this fucking, in this, in this theater. And I look, they're all pointing at this guy. I said, hey man. I said, why they all point at you? Were you attacked by a bear? Good looking guy. Everything. He goes, I actually, yeah. He goes, I was. And he was like, I was, but it's okay. I, I was like, wait, wait, what do you mean? It's okay. I go, you were attacked by a fucking bear and you're here. I'm about to do a bear joke. I was like, come up, come up, come up, come up. I said, come up. This is like, this is literally 15 minutes into my set. I'm doing a 50 minute set. This is 15 minutes into it. I said, come in, man, come on up. He comes up on stage. We start talking about it, bro. It was horrific, right? But I was able to keep it light enough that like the crowd is dying. He's telling his story and it's crazy, but the story's horrific. He's saying, yo, the bear, basically, you know, the bear, hit uh, uh ripped this dude's fucking scalp oh. from the back his oh. face came over like it ripped the scalp that way it lacerated his back he ended up shooting it in the mouth the brother was waiting over in the thing oh the i love that you you just bear. going after the brother like what, would you, the, what the fuck was the brother doing what is he doing you're getting ripped up and the brother's the brother was there. I was like, what is he hiding you know what i mean <laughs> and so and so we're going into the story and it sounds crazy but the guy's alive he's fine Come to find out, he had a sh he he was on um um uh why it was uh I said not I survived but there's another animal show that he came on uh that like two weeks later that he was gonna be on the show on TV a couple yeah. weeks later um it was it was it was amazing man it was so amazing like having a story like that I still had to do thirty minutes after right. that when this fucking story and it's like how am I eclipsing this right. fucking bear story that we're killing. <laughs> So the so the story so somebody grabbed it, filmed it, sent it, gave it to me, put it online. So the the people that from Holland America saw it, the people that run Holland America, that book Holland America, and then the, the like the one of the people that books the head of talent there, or whatever. 
she ended up contacting my agent and was like booking for the rest of the year so that year i was like wow. i was at holland like i did so much holland america so i was in alaska like 10 or 11 times and like all these other places but like it was just crazy because that just filled my 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 uh cruise calendar up like that just from right. random she was like who's this guy she's like who is this and and he needs to be on here more like we need more stuff like wow. this on ship this is great We'll put the okay. link to that video in the the description on the the YouTube version oh, of this God. podcast to, because it's it's hilarious. It was Instagram because those animals. Th there's no way that Animal Planet doesn't. All right, some of them like when the alligators cross in the street, they're like, God, <laughs> you know what? I yeah. smell fucking yolk in your mouth. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Dude, I, I fucking I, I I'm scrolling through and I'm like, this is a random. Oh, then there were 35 other ones. I was like, that <laughs> is all. I called Josh. And I'm like, dude, I'm checking out all this shit. I knew who you were, but I wanted to see more. And I said, dude, Josh, I started watching and I couldn't fucking stop. <laughs> you went down a rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah, there's some there's some good ones. There's a few good ones in there. The one where the the one where the dog is working his way up the fucking wall, his back legs yeah, are yeah, yeah. the wall. <laughs> and your boy's like, he goes, You you motherfuckers over there having a barbecue? You ain't hot dogs and shit. And I'm just like, what the fuck? And I'm dying. My wife was upstairs going, What are you laughing at? I'm like, the guy that we're going to have on today is a fucking riot. It's got to be a show with Corey Rodriguez and Michael Rappaport being like, the Ma, look at this fucking cat. <laughs> Dude, they're so good. They're fucking yeah. awesome. They're do you so like good. doing cruises, Corey? I do, man. I do. I really do. It, a lot it's... of comedians I know don't like. I've, I've never done one because I'm not good. Um, and... Oh. <laughs> Um, you just got to be clean. You can't do any cancer jokes, but you be clean. Oh. <laughs> I'm cleaner now. Now that yeah. <laughs> so you did a you were doing a bear joke with a bear attack victim in the room. I know what the <laughs> hey, hey, no. remember, Mike, you said before some people can do it, right? You said that before right, you can, you can do right. it. All right. Okay. <laughs> it was 2013. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, where are the uh, where are the July shows? I like how you put the whole like in May. In May, your post was great. I think you said, um, "What do you say?" Yes, we may laugh again. Oh, here are the May. Right, right, right. So where, yeah, July, where are you in July? July, July will be the, that'll be posted up. Uh, that'll be posted up this uh, today actually. But okay. July, um, I'm I'm all over the place. I'll be at the like. When is this going to drop? Actually, uh, Monday. Uh, Monday. Okay. Cool. Cool. So that following Monday, I'll be at the Rex. I'll be at the Rex Theater on July 9th in New Hampshire. Rex nice. Theater on July 9th, July 10th. I'll be in uh, Connecticut at Premium at Premium Vineyards out okay. there. It's a dope vineyard out there. Really nice. Um, and then like uh, 16th, I'll be at the Comedy Studio. And then the 17th to the 24th, vacation, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Doing and then uh, I'm doing shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing shit then. Going to Jersey Shore for a little bit. And then the nice. 30th, I'll be in Sacramento. And the 31st, I'll be back in New Hampshire. But you guys can go to CoreyRodriguez.com and check all that stuff out. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad Isaiah brought that up because I had the, the notes from the week we were supposed to have you on. And yeah. I still had Laugh Boston written down, and that's gone. So that's gone. <laughs> yeah, I already did that. <laughs> well, Corey, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, thanks for joining us, dude. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, awesome. man. Yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate you, man. Great, great going all over the place, man. Being able to talk about a little bit of everything. This was very cool. Yeah, we have awesome. we have no clue what we're doing. We just talk about shit. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. clearly. <laughs> well, thanks, looking, luck, looking forward to the dropping, man. I appreciate you guys. Thank all right, thanks, for Corey. All right, we'll see you. This is Brad Marchand, and you're listening to Breaking the Ice with Josh Dolan. I don't think he would ever let a pizza get out the door before he buried the whole thing, so he likes to eat that kid.